Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number. Today we'll do problem number eighty-seven and eighty-eight. As you can see, problem number eighty-seven is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? Question is, what is the percentage rate of return? On, on an investment of $1,000 that produces a total rate of return of D dollars that produces a total of D dollars in interest income that produces a total of D dollars in interest income over a period of 10 years so it takes n number of years and it produces a total of D dollars on an investment of $1,000 the question is if that were to be true what is this translate into a rate of return Let's find out, shall we? So let's begin with what we know. We know that one thousand dollar. We know that one thousand dollar yields yields d dollars in n years. Okay, now nice. if one thousand dollar yields d dollars, then that in turn implies that if you were to invest the tenth of the amount, one hundred dollars should yield tenth of the income in n years. If that's how much we earn in n years, let's say let's say n happens to be let's say n happens to be two. If that's how much we earn in two years, then in one year we should be able to earn half as much. If n happens to be three, then if we earn that much in three years, then in one year we should be able to earn one third of this amount. If n happens to be five, then in one year we should be able to earn one fifth of the amount. And therefore, in one year, therefore, this is this is in n years. So that implies that we should be able to earn one hundred dollars. On one hundred dollars, we should be able to earn d over ten times n dollars in one year. We just multiply this quantity by n. If we, if we, one more time, if we earn this much income in two years, then in one year we would have earned half the income. We would have taken this amount divided by two. If we earn that much income in three years, in one year we would have earned one third of the income. We would have taken this amount and divided by two, or divided by three rather. That's exactly what we're doing here. D over 10, we, we take in this quantity D over 10 and divided by N, which is same as D over 10 times one over N, which translates into d over 10n, d over 10n. The question is, how do we know if this answer is any any, any good? How do we know that we have not many, made any mistake in our logical process, in our in our in our in our logic, in our process, in our thinking? What we do always, we do what we always do, which is we convert this problem into an arithmetic problem, solve it arithmetically, and see if the answer answer we get answer we'll get arithmetically is the same answer that's going to be yielded by this answer. Let's find out, shall we? Let's make it very simple. Let's not take too long. Investment of $1,000 produces a total of, how much do you want to earn? Let's say $200. Let's pretend that D is $200. So we're going to earn $200 over a period of how many years? Let's, let's, pretend, let's pretend it's four, okay? So listen very carefully. So if you're going to pretend that you're earning $200 over in, in, in four years period, in, in a period of four years, if you're earning $200 in a period of four years, that means you must earn $50 in one year. A return of $50 in one year on an investment of $1,000 translates into a return of 5%. A 5% return on $1,000 will yield $50 in one year. So the answer is 5%. If this thing gives us 5, five we are all set because this, if this thing gives us 5, then that is the 5%. Why is this? Why is this even though it has a dollar sign next to it, why is that a percentage? Because this is the amount of amount of money. See, this is the amount. This is the dollar sign right here. This is the amount of money we will earn on an investment of one hundred dollars in one year. An investment of one hundred dollars in one year, whatever the yield is on an investment of one hundred dollars in one year, is what is referred to as a percentage rate of return. If somebody tells you that this investment is going to yield you seven percent. Well, seven percent. They just told you that you can earn seven dollars in one year if you were to invest one hundred dollars. That's what seven percent means. So here's your percentage, because we're going to earn this much money in one year on an investment of one hundred dollars. 
So this, in fact, b over 10n is, in fact, the percentage. And that amount better come out, come, come out to be 5 based on the values that we plugged in here. We plugged in 200 for d and 4 for n. So let's see what we get here. 200 for d, so that's 200 for d right here. 10 times n, and n is 4. n is 4. Divide top and bottom by 10, so 10 is going to go away, 0 is going to drop out. And 20 divided by 4, of course, is 5. This answer is correct. We have the correct answer. Let's do one more, shall we? The next problem that we'll do will also be about investment, but it will not be this simple. It will be a little bit more complicated. I'm warning you ahead of time. Warning you ahead of time is a bit redundant, isn't it? Because nobody warns anybody after the fact, does one? Number 88. How many years will it take for for an investment of D dollars to earn to produce a total of to earn E dollars if the rate of return is P percent. Let's see what we can do. But as I told you, this problem it may look simple, but it's going to require some thinking. So again, let's begin with what we know. What we know here is a simple fact that the rate of return is P percent. The rate of return of P percent implies that we will earn, we will earn P dollars on $100 in one year. That is given to us. That is given to us because we are told, we are told the rate of return is P percent. The rate of return of P percent translates into an income of P dollars in one year on an investment of $100. We are not investing P dollars. We want to invest we want to invest D dollars. So let's make the transition from P to D. So if you're earning P dollars in one year, then we should be able to earn one dollar on one hundred dollars in, say for example, P is three. If you're earning three dollars on one hundred dollars in one year, then we should be able to earn one dollar in one third of the year. That's if P happens to be five, if you're earning five dollars on one hundred dollars in one year, then we should be able to earn one dollar in one fifth of the year on one hundred dollars. If you're earning ten dollars on one hundred dollars, let's say let's say we're earning twelve dollars. If P happens to be twelve, if you're earning twelve dollars on one hundred dollars in one year, then we should be able to earn one dollar on one hundred dollars in one month, one twelfth of the amount, one one twelfth of the year. Therefore, one dollar on one hundred dollars will be yielded in one over P year. But we are not investing one dollar. We're not investing P dollars, we're going to invest D dollars. So if one dollar yields this, if one dollar yields on one hundred dollars in one year, two dollars should yield, should, two dollars should be the yield in half the year. Let's think for a second. If the return is one dollar in this much year, no, it will not be half the year, it will be twice as long. See, this is where you have to slow down. One more time. Keep this constant for a second. Don't, don't look at it for a second. Hide this at your hand. Okay? If you are earning $1 in this much amount of time, then if you want to earn $2, you will have to keep the money for twice as long. Not half as long, but twice as long. If you want to earn $3, you will have to earn, it will take three times as long. Therefore, E dollars, E dollars, 
on one hundred dollars will take will take one over p times e years. That's years. So that takes care of the E dollars. Now we move on to the second part here. We are not investing $100, we are investing D dollars. In order for us to make a transition from 100 to D dollars, first we have to go to $1. And once we go to $1, we will we'll go to D dollars. So if $100, if it takes $100 to earn E dollars, if it takes $100 to earn E dollars in this many year, what happens if, you were to, if I were to invest, if you were to invest $10? to earn this much amount of money, we're not changing the amount of money that we're earning, to earn this much amount of money on one tenth of the amount should take ten times as long. Should take ten times as long because we only have one tenth the amount. See? If you were to if you were to if you were to invest ten dollars, which is one hundred over ten, it should take ten times the amount. It will take E over P times ten. It will take 10 times as long to earn this much money, E dollars, on tenth of the amount. If you were to invest 100 over 2 dollars, which is 50 dollars, which is half of the 100 dollars, if you were to invest half the money, it should take twice as long. If you were to invest, if you were to invest 25th of the amount of money, if you were to invest only 4 dollars, it will take it will take 25 times this many years. Therefore, if you were to invest instead of $100, if you were to, instead of $100, if you were to invest $1, $1 would take 100, 100 times as long. We will earn E dollars, we will earn E dollars on $1 in this many years, in this many years. 100 times E over P on one dollar. Now this we already have our return. We want to earn E dollars. E dollars will take this many years if we were to invest one dollar. Therefore, if you were to invest two dollars, if you were to invest two dollars, it will take half as long. It will take half as long. If you were to invest two dollars, it will take half as long because you have twice as much money. Therefore, it takes half the amount of time to earn this much return. If you were to invest ten dollars instead of one dollar, it will take one tenth of the amount of time. We are not investing ten dollars, we are not investing one dollar, we are investing D dollars. Therefore, in, if you want to earn in D dollars, you, it will take whatever it was before, one deeth of that amount. That's it. That's how many years it will take. That's our answer. Our answer is one hundred over one hundred times E over D times P years. This is how long it will take, this is how long it will take to earn E dollars on an investment of D dollars. If you want to earn E dollars on an investment of D dollars, you'll have to keep the money in there for 100 times E divided by D times P years. That is correct. It is very abstract. It is very unusual as far as our daily lives is concerned because in our daily lives we deal with concrete numbers, which is what makes this algebra. Now the way to, way to confirm this answer, as we always have done, is to convert this problem, this algebraic problem, which is rather absurd, by plugging in numbers into it, making it hence making it a concrete problem that we can understand and we can feel and touch, not touch in the physical tactile sense of the word, but touch in the intellectual sense of the word. Because when I say 7% return on $1,000 over three years, I can, I can understand what that means. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to plug in numbers here for the variables. We're going to solve this problem again one more time arithmetically. We're going to find, our, we're going to find out our answer to the arithmetic problem and see if this quantity yields the same answer. If it gives us the same answer, then this answer is correct. Let's do that, shall we? So, we have D dollars. How much do you want to invest? You decide. Let's invest $1,000. So remember, D is $1,000. You want to invest $1,000, and how much do you want to earn? 
Let's earn six hundred dollars. Let's earn six hundred dollars. And what do you want the rate of return to be? Let's pretend the rate of return is. Let's pretend rate of return is six percent. Keep it very simple, okay? Keep it very simple. Don't have to make complicated. Here we go. Pay attention. If six percent yields, forget about this one thousand for the time being. If six percent yields six hundred dollars, then one percent should yield one hundred dollars. What is the return to figure? How long it takes? How many years? Okay. So, if one thousand dollars, if one thousand dollars yields six hundred dollars, that tells us that one hundred dollars. One hundred dollars so that's the unknown we can't plug in there that's the that's our unknown we, we cannot plug in something for just give me one second the, the unknown is how many years unknown is how many years let's start again okay so we're going to invest one thousand dollars one thousand dollars at six percent. One thousand. Okay, let's let's start again. Okay, here it's coming back to me again. Sometimes it happens. We're pretending that we are we are investing one thousand dollars at six percent. Okay, listen carefully. If you're going to invest one thousand dollars at six percent, six percent of one thousand is sixty. And here we are claiming that we earned six hundred dollars. See, it's coming together to me. Okay, for for a split second I lost my concentration. So if you're going to if you're going to invest one thousand dollars and if you're going to pretend that we're going to investing it at a rate of return of six percent six percent and one thousand is sixty dollars but here we are saying that we earn six hundred dollars well if you earn six hundred dollars at the rate of sixty dollars per year you must have kept the money in the account for ten years based on these numbers that we plugged in the answer is ten the answer is ten if this one gives us ten when we replace e with 600, D with 1000, and P with 6. If this one gives us 10, then we are in business. Let's do it. Then we'll know that our answer is correct. Let's do it here. 100, 100 times E, which was 600, that's our E, over D, which is 1000, that's our D, times P, which is 6. Which is six. Is that, does that give us a 10? Of course, you can kill it. See, it's going to give us 10. Why? Because it's, look, this, this, if you divide top and bottom, if you divide top and bottom by 100, this two zero is going to cancel out, and this two zeros are going to cancel out. Divide top and bottom by six, six six is going to go away, and you're left with 10, 100 divided by 10. 100 divided by 10 is 10. There you go. That answer is correct. That answer is correct. It took some time, took some effort, but it is in fact the correct answer. Bye now.